Hello and welcome to the second video that I'll be posting on my Java tutorial series. And in today's video, we are going to talk about Java variables. We are going to talk about the types of Java variables as well as the way or methods to override the values and assign values for these variables. We are going to talk about the math as well and how to incorporate the system.out.printline line and print with these Java variables. So the first thing that we're going to do is, of course, to open Visual Studio Code. And once this is opened, we can start to create a new file. I suggest making a new file because, well, every topic that we discuss, I suggest making a new file so that you can be able to revise it and revisit it anytime you want, especially when the series is over, because I want you guys to actually understand all the concepts that we have learned throughout this series. So I suggest making a new file by going to the Explorer, clicking on the new file and name this new file variables.java. And as always, inside of a Java file, we have the public class variables and this variables here or this keyword here has to be the same with the name of the file because this is what we have discussed in a previous video. And we have to also type in public static void main string the square brackets and then args and then curly brackets. And as we have discussed previously, this is also a code that is used to make sure that the code in the Java file is run properly and will be able to be executed. So anyway, we are going to discuss the first five main Java variables. And the five main Java variables, of course, will include string, int, float, R and boolean. So string is a Java variable that is used to store text. And integer is a Java variable that is used to store integers or as we often refer in math, whole numbers. And float is a Java variable that stores decimal values. And char is a Java variable that stores single characters and the word single here must be emphasized because char can only store a character or one character and then our last java variable is boolean and boolean is a java variable that stores true or false statements and from the five main java variables we get to identify how to write a variable or you might be wondering right now how do we write a java variable or how do we make a java variable and oftenly we use or follow this format which is the type of variable and then name of variable and then equals to our assigned value and from that format we can make variable so for example we are going to make the string variable so to make a string variable we just have to type in string and the name of variable which is my string and you can name the variable anything you want but for demonstration purposes, I think it's best if I just make it as clear and as general as possible. So string, my string, and then equals to the assigned value. And when we deal with string, we use quotation mark, double quotation marks, and then we put the value inside of it. And to be fairly honest with you, anything inside of this quotation marks or even nothing at all is already indicated as string. So as long as you have these double quotation marks, it's already accounted as string. But in this case, I'm going to make it general, so I'm just going to type in text. 
and then we can make a int variable and to make an int variable we can type in the type of the variable which is int and then we type in the name of the variable which is my int and then we say equals to the assigned value and the assigned value can be anything you wish but in this case i just say 10 and then as always we have to end with a semicolon then for a float variable we just need to type in the type of variable which is float and then type in the name of the variable and since i'm using or trying to make it as general as possible i'm going to name it my float and once again i want to emphasize that you can name it anything you want and for float it is unique as the assigned value is a decimal place or a decimal value but to indicate whether or not it's a float we also have to add an f at the end and by adding this f here the computer recognizes this as a float so remember when we are dealing with float we should always add an f at the end and then next we have a char variable and to make a char variable we just need to type in char and then let's just follow the pattern and i'm going to use or name this variable my char and equals that to a single character and when we deal with char we have to remember that instead of using double quotes or double quotation marks we use the single quotation marks and inside of the single quotation marks you can put anything you want like a capital a lowercase a capital b lowercase b capital c lowercase c and etc but in this case i will use capital a and then end with a semicolon and finally we have the boolean value or the boolean variable and to make a boolean variable we can just just type in boolean my boolean equal to true or it can be also false and do take note that boolean can only store true or false and that's it there can never be any other values except true or false so yeah boolean is always true or false and that's it there is no other value that it can store okay that sums up the five main java variables and how to write them now i like to discuss the remaining four java variables because in reality there is a grand total of nine variables this is of course the five main and this is the most commonly used in java and almost in all cases you're going to be using one of these but the other four here the four remaining java variables is essentially just used to make sure that the program is as optimized and as effective as possible and this can be done by making sure that the application does not use too much memory and there is a grand total of four and those may include bytes short let me just retype it right here okay and then byte short and then we have long and we have double and byte here is a java variable that stores whole numbers just like integers but can only store numbers ranging from negative 128 to 127 and the reason why i'm introducing to you a byte even though there's an int is because a byte uses less memory than an int and i'll tell you the range for which int can store but essentially all of this remaining java variable here is just used to make sure that the memory allocated is not too much and just enough to fulfill the job of the variable because if you have a number from negative 128 to 127 then you can just use a byte because that will save a lot of memory rather than using an int because int uses a lot of memory and it can store up to negative 2 billion to 2 billion so any number between negative 2 billion to 2 billion is accounted as an int so that is why in advanced level of coding people use these remaining java variables because they know that they want to make sure that the code 
or the application is made to be as effective as possible and all of the memory use is effective and efficient and yeah they just wanted to make sure that there is no memory wasted but since it's a beginner tutorial we are just going to focus on using the five main java variables and won't focus too much on the four remaining java variables because this java variable is more to advanced level and it won't really affect any logic except saving memory and that isn't really too important or necessary in this stage so you may note this down but you don't need to really understand them right now or find the purpose of it as we can still convert them or write them down the way we write a normal variable so anyway short is also a whole number variable that stores value from 30 from negative 32,000 to 32,000 to 32,000 and long is a whole number that stores from 9 negative to 9 quintillion 9 quintillion to 9 quintillion and the real range isn't exact negative 32,000 or 32,000 but there is a series of numbers behind them but I didn't really want to go that specific but if you really are interested in using these uh, remaining Java variables you can search them up because the numbers aren't really easy to remember so I just gave the range for each and every Java variable we have for the four remaining Java variables anyway for double it is essentially a type of variable that stores decimal values and it can range up to 15 decimal digits meanwhile a float stores six to seven decimal digits and as you can see there is a drastic change from float to double because it can store 15 and float can only store seven and of course the greater the number the larger the amount of memory needed so that's why sometimes people choose to implement byte short than using int or sometimes they use long because they have huge numbers that they want to calculate instead of using int at the end of the day it just depends on the application and the number you're dealing with but it is safe to always assume that int is used because the amount in most cases or in your coding experience you probably just need int and float you don't really need by short long and double so that's why just focus on the five main java variables and if you want to make it much more effective later on you can implement the four remaining java variables and okay that's all so now i'd like to ask you guys to do something or to do this as part of a challenge which is to create a variable that can store these values so let me just write this down for a second create a variable that can store that can store these values and we are going to say for number one I need you guys to store number three and then for number two 2.0 number three is 423 number four is true number five is this is a good text and number six is none other than a so i want you guys to pause the video right now and try to do the challenge which is to create a variable that can store these values Pause the video right now and try to do the challenge. Okay, so for those of you who already got the answer and know what to do, great job. But for those of you who don't know how to do it, it's fine because this is, after all, the learning process. So to solve number one, we just use an int. And what I like to do to create or solve problems like this I'd like to see the value first and then look back to the Java variable and think 
this value is a whole number or a number and then as we know from the five main java variables numbers can only be inside of int or float and then specifically we have to see whether it's a whole number or a decimal place and in this case it is a whole number so we can assume that it's an int so for number one the answer is integer and i do want to emphasize that you should never have a duplicate of a variable name like this we have my int for one variable and below i say i typed in again my int it's going to say duplicate local variable so you should never have the same variable name for this case of course instead of typing in my int i'm just going to say my int answer is equal to three okay next for number two the answer is a float my float answer equals to 2.0 and then don't forget to add an f as always because it is a float and the f is what i emphasizes to the computer that it is essentially a float then for number three we use an int again my int and then since i don't want the same name I typed in my int two answer is equal to 423. And then for number four, it's a true or false value. Because it's a true, we have to look back into our five main Java variables and look which data, which variable type stores true or false. And apparently Boolean does. So we're just going to type in Boolean my Boolean answer equal to true and then for number five of course it's a string string because it's the text so string my string is equal to this this is a good text and then and as always with a semicolon and then we have our final one which is a single character a and we use char my char answer is equal to and as always since we are dealing with char we use a single quote single quote a and then end with a semicolon and as you can see again we have a duplicate local variable my string because the same name my string and my string is same so what to do when you have a string or when you have a duplicate variable, you just need to change the name. So in this case, I'm just going to change it to my string answer. And yeah, we should try to avoid having the same name because it will make an error inside of the Java programming. So always make sure that the name of the variable is different from one another. And there we go. And this is the answer for the challenge. Now we can proceed with assigning operators and overriding operators. And as we can see above, we did already assign values to our variables. Like take this for example. We did already say int my int answer, which is a variable, and then we directly assign it to three. And in Java, that is a way to assign variables, but you can also do another method, which is also assigning but we assign it later on as the code progresses and what i mean by that i mean we can make a variable like this so for instance we're going to make an uh, int variable but this also applies for all variable types such as a float variable boolean variable string variable char variable it doesn't matter but in this case i have chosen to use int because i think that's the most easiest one to demonstrate so I'm just going to type it int my, I just say num, num1 is equal to 10. This is what we normally do, right? And if we use the other method, we can just make in the variable first. So we're just going to type in int num1, and then below that, we're going to assign num1 to 10. And we can always do this. And essentially this right here is just the same thing as saying this, int num1 equals 10. The only main difference is that in line 45, 
and this is line 45, we make a variable called num1. And then in line 46, we say to the computer, computer, you need to set num1 to 10. And it's just the same thing as saying this. But the main difference is, of course, by doing this, we are essentially assigning the variable later on, and you don't need to do a direct assign. For your information, this is called direct assign because you directly assign the value. So yeah, this is called direct assign. And this is assigning the variable, but later on. And it's called direct assign because, well, like I said before, it's just directly assigning the variable and directly creating the variable. Meanwhile, when you use this method, you can always make the variable first and then assign it later on once you know or sure that the value is a certain number or a certain value. So yeah, this is assigning the variable. And we also got to learn about overriding variables or values. So if for instance we have int num1 and num1 is equal to 10 and for instance we are going to print out the num1 like in line 50, you get to see that the value is 10. And you might be wondering, how does this work? And this works because as we have previously discussed before, system.out.print line is a code that is used to tell the computer that we want to output something. But you might be wondering, didn't we have to add the quotation marks every time we want to print out something? Well, that works, but since I've introduced you to string, and since string is essentially everything with the double quotation marks, if we want to print out the number, we don't necessarily need to make it a string. We can just directly print out the number like this. As you can see, we don't need to make it into a string first. We can just directly print out the number as it is. Like see. As you can see, like see, like this, as you can see, 15 did print out. So yeah. Anyway, with that said, we can actually know that we don't really need to use quotation marks or double quotation mark every time you want to deal with printing because this only prints for text or in this case, string because I've introduced to you guys that essentially text in Java is written down this way using double quotation marks and anything inside of double quotation marks or having double quotation marks is assumed as string. So yeah. And we have this. Now talking about assigning, we can also override the value and we can override by once more assigning it to a new value. So if I were to assign num1 to 20 and we click on run here, the first value will become 20. And the reason why this happens is because the computer sees the code per line. So we can start with 46 first. So in 46, the computer sees, okay, we need to make a variable. And that variable is called num1. And then at 48, it'll be like, oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, num1 is set to 10. Okay. And then at 49, it's going to say, oh, wait, no, num1 is now 20. And then at 51, we print out num1. And num1 will be 20 because the computer last remembers it as 20 because, well, the code runs in numerical order. So one is the first thing that it will run and the last, the largest one is the last it will run. So it just runs in the systematic order. So in 46, it makes the variable at 48, it sees, okay, it's 10. And then at 49, it says, oh wait, no, now it's 20. And then when we print it out, of course, it'll be 20 because it's the last value we input. It doesn't matter how many times you do this, the computer will always see the last value because that will be the final value that we assign it to. And this is this term here is called overriding because we override its pre-existing value with another value. 
as you can see it output 50 so yeah this is called assigning and this is called overriding overriding yep and now with assigning the variable and overriding i also like to introduce to you the use of java in math so just like in real life there is a grand total of five math operators found in java and those may include of course the cosine for addition and the dash or minus for subtraction and then we have the asterisk for multiplication and we have the slash for division and finally we have the percentage icon operator for modulus which is if you're not familiar it returns the division the division of the it returns the the divisions remainder and for instance of course if we try to say 10 modulus by 3 we get 1 because 10 divided by 3 is 3 and 10 minus 9 is 1 so yeah that's why we get 1 because it takes in the divisions remainder or returns the divisions remainder and yeah this is the 5 math operator in java and if we were to use or type this down or print out the text we can do that as well by using system.out.println and then we're going to make a variable that we are going to modify and add and do math in so we're going to say int num1 is equal to 10 so we're just going to say oh i think num1 was a variable that i have so i need to change that name to num2 so int num2 equals 10 and then num2 i just say add that by 3 and end that with semicolon and if we click on run it should give us 13 and i'm just going to kill terminal and click run again so we get a brand new terminal so we get 13 and the reason why 13 is the value we obtain is because 10 plus 3 is 13 and an easy way for me to explain to you is instead of looking at num2 we look at num2 as a number because num2 stores 10 so it's easier for us to visualize num2 as the 10 or the value it stores which is in this case 10 that's why i say 10 plus 3 is 13 and then if we were to write in again system the other print line num2 minus 3 we get 7 because 10 minus 3 is equal to 7 and we system the out the print line num2 asterisk 3 that means it's multiply so 10 times or 10 asterisk by 3 is equal to 30 and system the out the print line num2 slash 3 is equals to 10 divided by 3 which is 9 which is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9 and that is the greatest value that 3 can use to divide 10 and then finally for modulus we can type in I guess num2 and then we use the percentage operator and then 3 and then and that with a semicolon and the value that we are able to obtain is 10 modulus 3 which is 1 so if we click on run right now we can get the value 13 7 30 3 and 1 so this is simple math because we just implement this in our daily life and we can also implement this in java
Now, before we continue, I'd like to discuss about the use of variables. Because rather than always setting up a variable with a number like this, or a certain value directly, we can also implement the number Java variables, such as int and float, with a math operator. For instance, if we just say num3 is something like, okay, I just want num3 to be 10 plus 3. So I just say 10 plus 3. Or we can even take in num2 because num2 takes in the value 10, right? So we can just say num2 is equals to, or num3 is equals to num2 plus 3. And then if we just system that out that print line, num3. And let me just refresh this again. We get to see that it's essentially 13 as well. And I want to make it more distinguishable, let's make it 5. So it should give us 15. As you can see, it works. And this just goes to show that you don't really need an exact value when making a variable. The value must be in the same type, which is integer, and of course, num2 plus 5 is an integer, but it doesn't need to be an exact value, like a certain number or a certain value uh, when it comes to numbers such as int and float. But of course, for string, char, and boolean, they need to be exact values, but for int and float, we can essentially implement these math operators inside of the variable. So you can store in values such as num2 plus 5 or num2 slash 3, modulus 3, modulus 5. It can be anything you want. And it will store that number or value inside of num3. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't necessarily need a exact value. You can just use these math operations to give you a certain value that you want to store in a variable. And I think that's it. So now I am going to discuss regarding the final topic, which is the use of system the other print line with strings and numbers. Since in the previous video, we all discussed about strings, we didn't implement any numbers inside of them. And from this example here, we get to know that if it's a number plus number or int plus int or int plus float or any number plus number, we get to do the normal multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and modulus. But let's find out what would happen if we were to just take in a plus sign, but for a text, for a string in this case. So let's just see. System dot out dot print line, and let's just make a variable for this, okay? Or you know what? No, let's just not make a variable. Let's just use the normal string. Hi, then plus hi. Let's just say hi, then def code. And in your opinion, what would happen? Let me just clear this terminal again. Well, the answer is it will combine the text. So instead of, you know, like the number here where it adds the value when we have the number and number, we add the value or we do the math operation. If we use print line and we have a text and a text, it just combines the text together. And if we want to have a space, perhaps we can just add a space here. Click on run again. And as you can see, we have a space in between. And that is pretty awesome and a new concept for you guys to learn because it doesn't necessarily mean that this plus sign here or operator only works for numbers. It can also work for text and strings. So with that in mind, do you ask yourself what will happen if we combine both string and number inside of system the other print line? And I will show you that right now. So if we just have 
you know, a text here, num2, or string, num2 plus 3, and then I'm just going to say equals to. And then let's just add a plus sign here. And since we want 13, right, we're just going to add this. Because num2 plus 3, and then since it's a text, it should give us something like num2, num2 plus 3 is equal to 13. And that's what you might expect. But the answer is wrong. It's not going to give you this. And I'm just going to clear the terminal, click on run again. And as you can see, no, you get 103. And you might wonder, where do we get the 103? And this is where it gets a little bit challenging for you to understand. Because if you have num2 plus 3, num2 is a variable, an int variable that stores the value 10. So as we can see from this concept here, we get to see that when there's a text plus a text, it becomes a, it combines the text, right? And this also applies for if there's a text and a number and a number. If there's a text and a number and a number, the computer just sees this as a text because if we add the numbers together, what will happen with the text? We can't add the text with the number, right? So logically, the computer would just say, oh, okay, we're just going to assume that this is a text. And it'll be like, oh, okay, so this number right here won't be added together, but it will just be following the text rule where we just combine them together. And since num2 is 10, and we combine that with 3, we get 103. Which is why we get 103. Because 10 literally just gets added with 3 behind it. Because we add 3, not 10 plus 3 equals to 13. So we just put the 10 next to the 3, or the 3 just next to the 10. So that's why we get 103. And you might be wondering then, how does this actually apply, or what are the rules that affect this? And the rule that affects whether or not it adds like this, and something like this, is whether or not you have a string or not in the first place. So if you have a string in the first place, it will always, or the computer will always assume that it will just connect each other and won't really do the maths, as we have seen here. And this makes you wonder, how do we get the 13 value? Because we want num2 plus 3 equals to 13, right? We don't want 103, that's just wrong. And the only way we can do that is by making a variable, as I have said before. Here, we can see that we store num3, or we make a variable called num3, and it stores num2 plus 5. And we can also implement that concept here. So instead of adding it here, where when there's a string, the print line acts it or implements the connect each other concept like this, where it doesn't really add, it just combines each other. So to avoid that, just make a new variable like this. Int num4, because I don't want to have the same name with num3, is equals to num2 plus 3. And then, instead of doing the math here, we can implement num4 here. And by doing that, we get 13, because the math is essentially done inside of num4. And that is the use of actually storing another variable and doing the math operation inside of it before you actually put into the print line. Because you have to remember that when print line encounters a string of any sort, even like this, this is also counted as a string, just for your information. So if there's a double quotation mark anywhere inside of print line, it will assume or follow the rule where instead of adding and getting a certain value, it just combines the text together. And since we have a number here, it doesn't care if you have a number or not. It just combines all the text together. And to avoid that, just make a variable, do the math inside of variable, and print out that variable in the end of the day. And that is essentially the use of this plus sign in system.out.println and how you can deal 
with integers when printing out and that's it and before i end today's video and revise everything i also like to introduce one final topic which is the use of this space here this space here so when you want to say num2 and then plus num4 the use of this here is to act as a space because remember anything if you do this you will get nothing but if you have a space here string will recognize this as a space or as a gap so when we click on run here we can see that num2 is 10 and then num num4 is 13 because num2 is 10 plus 3 so 10 plus 3 okay as i've said before anything inside the quotation marks or even just these double quotation marks is already counted as a string so if you put the double quotation mark and you put space inside of it it will be used as a space so that's how you get a space when dealing with variables because normally you have something like this right you have high and then plus def code and then if this is a variable and it's a variable you don't really have space to add this so that's why you add this here or to even give you visualization i'm just gonna paste it here and if you can see it clearly this high and def code should give you should have a space again look high def code there's a space here and that's because of this if we were to remove this it should be no space here no space so yeah this can also be used for space and that's just a note that you should try to remember and try to implement in your practices so yeah i think that sums up today's video and topic so now we're just gonna revise and see all the concepts that we have learned so the first concept that we got to see was the five main java variables which you should have already remembered and remember by heart because this is really important especially when you want to code in java and in many languages so remember this and then you must remember that a string stores text in stores whole numbers float stores decimal values up to six to seven decimal digits char stores single characters and the word single here is very important because multiple characters that's a string but a single character is a char and boolean is storing true or false statement and the use of char will of course be discussed as the series progress and i think i'll be discussing it in the next videos and then string here is how you make a variable by following this format which is type of variable name of variable and then we equal that to the signed value or we can always not do the direct assign and just for information this is called the direct assign because we directly assign the value but if you don't want to direct assign you can always make the variable first and then assign it later on and then this is the type of the variable with their respective values like string with double quotation marks and then integer just directly putting the number float with an f at the end char with a one quotation mark instead of two quotation mark you have one quotation mark and then any character but one character only so any character can be capitalized or not but only one character and one quotation mark and boolean which is a true or false statement and can only store true or false statement and we also got to learn the 40 many java variables which are used only to make sure that the code is as effective as possible and only using memory that it's supposed to use and effectively use the memory where byte can store a negative 128 to 127 and it takes up one byte and of course the greater the number it can store the greater the amount of bytes that it can store which can be uh, problematic if you are making a professional code where you want to be as effective as possible especially with the memory use and then below that you did manage to also create a variable 
based on these values which is great because that goes to show that you are already ready to use these variables and then we get to learn about how to assign a variable which doesn't need to be direct because we don't need to directly assign them but we can assign them later on and how overriding works where the computer or device always takes in and looks at the last value and we get to learn about math in java where there's plus minus multiply which is asterisk division which is slash and modulus which is the percentage operator and how system the out the print line behaves differently when there is only numbers and numbers and text and text and text and numbers where text and number implements the text and text format where the computer or device just combines everything together instead of getting a certain value or add the number together and where numbers and numbers in system the out print line will give you the math or do math operations there you go and also we get to learn how variables can also use or implement these math operators in java and how this concept can save you from printing out a value with a string inside of it and that's it i also like to emphasize that you don't really need to remember the four remaining java variables and once you've grasped this knowledge here you can later move on to this and of course and of course i will try to cover up these topics as well so yeah i think that sums up today's video and i hope you get to enjoy learn new things and i'll see you in the next video